Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. I am Mr. Vilane and I am from Ekuruleni East Tivert College. Today I'll be giving a lesson on the bending and twisting of shafts. This forms part of the syllabus for mechanical drawing and design. As the topic it says itself, it is the bending and twisting of shafts. So we'll be designing shafts for both bending and as well as for twisting. So to start off our lesson, we need to consider the components that I will be mounted on my shaft. And there are three basic components that we'll be actually looking at. We'll be looking at pulleys, uh, gear systems, and flywheels. So we'll start off with the pulleys where we'll consider how the forces created by my pulley are acting on my shaft. So we first need to consider how is the pulley mounted on my shaft. So the first one we'll look at is for vertical mount. This would mean that my pulley is mounted on my shaft and the belt is running vertically downwards. So it means that the pulley is perhaps driving a machine or another pulley below the shaft. So as you can see here, uh, my belt tensions are running vertically downwards. So T1 and T2. So these are my tight side tension and this is my slack side tension. So what effect do these tensions have on my shaft? Well, these two tensions have a total tension acting on my shaft directly at the center and that is the total tension which is just the sum of the two tensions added together. So the belt tensions have a total tension which is acting at the center of my shaft. You can see this is in my shaft, the center of my shaft, and the two added together give me a total tension acting on my shaft. This is for a vertically mounted pulley. If we look at again, if we have a vertically mounted pulley as depicted here. So again, in this instance, there's my pulley. Um, I've got a shaft fitted at the center here. So I've got a center line running through here. So here we have that the shaft is mounted vertically, but instead of downwards, my pulley is running vertically upwards. So here you can have T1, here you have T2. So we already know that now these two tensions will have a total tension which is T1 plus T2 acting at the center of the shaft. Now, important to note for the two vertical mounts, the direction of the total tension which is acting on your shaft. For this pulley mount, which is running vertically downwards, the total tension is following the direction of my actual pulley mount, which is downwards. Also, yeah, the total tension acting on your shaft is going upwards as a result of my two tensions which are also running upwards. Now let's look at a second instance or another instance where your pulley mount is not vertical but it is rather horizontal. So in this instance I have my pulley all right and instead of my pulley being mounted 
Um, instead of my pulley being mounted vertically, it is now mounted horizontally and it is running horizontally to the right. So if it's running horizontally to the right, uh, my two belt tensions will be facing that way. So this would be T1, that will be T2. So what do the, what the, what is the effect on my shaft due to the two tensions? Well, the effect on my shaft due to the two tensions is the total tension acting at the center of the shaft. And that will be nothing but the sum of my two tensions, T1 plus T2. As you can see that the total tension is facing the same direction as my two tensions. That is going to be critical when we start analyzing the forces acting on my shaft in order to calculate the bending moments on my shaft. All right, so let's look at another horizontal uh, mount where now my pulley, let's just move this one here, where my pulley is mounted horizontally but it's facing towards the left so here we have a pulley mounted horizontally there's my shaft in the middle there I've got my center line here and the two tensions are facing to the left so this pulley is running to the left T1, T2, then we know that the effect that these two tensions have on my shaft is directly at the center and it is the sum of the two tensions, T1 plus T2. Okay, so now we've seen that we need to firstly Establish how is the pulley mounted vertically or horizontally. That will tell us what is the effect the two tensions have on my shaft. We also need to take care of the direction. So if my pulley is running horizontally to the right, the total tension acting on my shaft will also face to the right. If my pulley is mounted vertically downwards, the total tension acting on my shaft will also be facing downwards. So now let's look at an example where now your pulley is neither mounted horizontally or vertically but it is mounted at an angle. So if your pulley is mounted at an angle it would simply mean the following. It would mean that you have your pulley You would have the center of the shaft in the middle, yeah? All right. And obviously, your pulley would be mounted at a specific angle. Let's say at an angle either below the horizontal. So this pulley is running at an angle of theta below the horizontal. Here I would have my two tensions, T1 uh, plus T2. Uh, that doesn't look very clear, let's use the red. T1 plus T2. So, same principle that we used with the vertical mount and the horizontal mount. My effective tension, or my total tension acting on my shaft, is also going to act at A angle theta. Let's use the uh, let's use the red yeah for clarity. So it's also gonna be at an angle theta. So this angle here and this angle there will be the same. So this is my angle theta. So now that I have now my total tension acting at an angle, I need to now find the horizontal and vertical force of this total tension. 
T1 plus T2. Remember, this gives you the total tension here. Yeah. So you need to now find the horizontal and vertical force. That's where now I need to have my right angle triangle. So there's my right angle triangle. There's my right angle triangle. This is my vertical force. This is my horizontal force. So if we just redraw that for some purity here, yeah, let's just redraw that. So here we had our total tension at an angle. And then this is angle theta. And then this is my vertical force. This is my horizontal force. This is total tension, which is T1 plus T2. This is F vertical. And this is F horizontal. So to find F vertical, I would simply have to say, all right, F vertical will be nothing but the total tension times that by sine theta, and F horizontal will be nothing but the total tension times that by cos theta. This is using my sine cos and tan rule to find the two forces. So now, for my calculations on my shafts, I now know that I've got a horizontal force acting on my shaft, which is going in towards the right, and I've got a vertical force acting on my shaft, which is going downwards. So let's look at another example of where my shaft is fitted on a angle or oh, sorry where my um, pulley is fitted on an angle so again I've got my pulley all right so my pulley is at an angle Running at an angle. There's my two center lines. One horizontal, one vertical. There's my shaft fitted in the middle here. And this pulley is at an angle theta. Theta to the vertical. So this pulley is running at an angle theta to the vertical. We use the same principle to find my effective tension which is acting on my shaft. It will also at the same exact same angle. So if that angle is theta there, this angle must also be theta over there. So this is my tension T1, this is my tension T2. So the total tension here total tension will just be T1 plus T2. If we now find the horizontal and vertical force, it will be nothing but my total tension acting on my shaft, moving in that direction. I've got my vertical force, but my vertical force at a specific angle, theta, and we've got horizontal force. There we go. So this gives me F vertical, this gives me F horizontal, and this is nothing but T total, which is T1 plus T2. So again, this is my right triangle triangle. So to find F vertical and F horizontal. I use my sine, cos, and tan rule. I can say F vertical is equals to T total times that by 
cos theta and my f horizontal will be t total times by sine theta. So now I know the two horizontal and vertical forces that are acting on my shaft. One is going downwards and the other one is going to the left. That is going to help me to establish the bending moments both horizontally and vertically that are acting on my shaft. So, we've seen now that in either position, whether mounted at an angle of theta below the horizontal or at an angle theta relative to the vertical line, we need to establish the two forces that are acting on my shaft, one horizontal and one vertical. So now this, let us look at the next section where now we are not dealing with pulleys, but now we are in actual fact dealing with gear systems. Now gear systems work a little bit differently because with gear systems we need to determine the two forces that are acting on my gear system, which is mainly your tangential force and as well as the radial force. Now the radial force may be either on the vertical or maybe on the horizontal, depending on how the gear system is positioned. Now for this course, we'll be only dealing with the involute gears and by involute gears we mean that the gears are mount are mashing at an angle of 30, no, sorry, 20 degrees. So if I've got two gear systems, so now this is gear systems. So there I've got a PCD of my driver gear, and I've got a PCD of my driven gear. So this is my driven gear. So these are my two gears mashing together. These are my two gears mashing together. That's the center line. So gear, so let's call this one gear A and this one, let's call it gear B. So gear A is mashing with gear B. So gear A, as we've said, this would be your driver gear. And gear B, gear B, this would be your driven gear. So now how do we establish the forces that are acting on my gear? Firstly, we need to consider the rotation at which your driver gear is rotating. Now, I'm going to first assume that the driver gear is rotating counterclockwise. In that direction, there counterclockwise. So it's moving counterclockwise, which would mean that once this pushes or once this meshes with gear B, it gear B will turn clockwise. Now, as I've said, that these gears, or for this course, we'll be dealing with involute gears, meaning that these two forces are meshing at an angle of 20 degrees. It would mean that my driver gear, once it starts mashing with gear B, which will be at this point here, and about this point there, it will then engage with gear B at an angle of 20 degrees relative to the, relative to the horizontal. There's my horizontal. So these two gears will mesh at an angle of 20 degrees, 20 degrees there, 20 degrees, at an angle of 20 degrees relative to the horizontal. So this is my horizontal line. Or, we'll say this is my line of action. This is where the um, mashing starts taking place at this point here. 
So gear A will push gear B at an angle of 20 degrees. Since these are angular gears, it will push this one at an angle of 20 degrees relative to the horizontal or the line of action. So now I've got my pressure force or my pushing force, we would call it, or the normal force as some would say. So this would be F normal, the normal force or the pressure force. This is the force that is causing B to turn. So or this is the force applied on B in order for it to turn. So my two vertical and horizontal force will be as follows. There's my horizontal force acting in that direction there. And there's my vertical force acting in that direction there. So again here we say this is F horizontal and this is F vertical. So again, how do I now calculate these two forces? Again, since FV is opposite to 20 degrees, I can say that FV will be nothing but Fn sine 20 degrees. And my F horizontal will be nothing but Fn cos 20 degrees. Alright, let's look at another example for gear systems. But now, we are going to change the rotation of my driver gear. Instead of going clock, uh, counterclockwise, this time my driver gear will be turning clockwise. So again, I've got the two PCBs of my gear mashing together. Alright. Okay, so this again, we say this is gear A, and let's say this is gear B. Let's put in this two center lines, so this align at the specific center line. So, now, in this instance, my driver gear, which is A, it is turning clockwise. It's no longer turning anti-clockwise, it's turning clockwise. So, what will happen now? How will gear A push gear B? Well, the same principle applies. So, this gear will rotate, will go all around and mesh with gear A, or start meshing with gear B at this point. At this point, this is say our line of action, and we say that Gear A will push gear B in that direction. If you're turning clockwise, it will push gear B in that direction relative to the line of action. There's my line of action here, which happens to be on the horizontal. So this is at an angle of 20 degrees. Remember, we are working with angular gears. So they are always at an angle of 20 degrees. So I can now insert my two vertical and horizontal force. Okay, horizontal, again vertical, F vertical, F horizontal. So how do I find now the two forces? So F vertical will be nothing but Fn, the normal force or the pressure force, times sine 20 degrees. And F horizontal will be nothing but F n times cos twenty degrees. Okay, so I hope now you understand how these forces are acting on my pulleys and on my gear systems. Important to note for pulleys, we need to take care of the direction. We need to consider how the pulleys are mounted. That will help me to establish where is the effective tension on my shaft 
acting. For gears, we need to consider the direction in which the driver gear is turning. That will tell me in which direction is the normal force facing. And if remember that we are working with involute gears, so the pressure force is always at an angle of 20 degrees to the line of action or to the horizontal. Okay, on our next video, we'll look at gear systems that are mounted at an angle and also establish.